Tell us uh, a little bit about what you're going to be doing with Funko tonight. How did this come about? Well, they've approached me about, you know, uh, they've sent me toys because they've made various toys of things that I've been associated with, whether it's the Joker or uh, Star Wars related. And they wanted to do something special. And their answer was to do <laughs> an action figure of me, my, Mark Hamill himself. And I have to tell you, it, it's, it shows you what a bona fide, genuine nerd I am, that one of the career highlights, and it's completely genuine, for me was when The Simpsons, I did one episode of The Simpsons, as Mark Hamill, a cartoon, and I looked like The Simpsons with the lip and all that. They made a, a figure of me, the cartoon Simpson me. And I thought, oh my God. First of all, I just was adored The Simpsons in those days. And uh, you know, it's just a proud moment. So I thought, this is another quirky. There's a, I've been animated in shows over the years as Mark Hamill. It's, it's harder than it sounds, because if you're doing a character, you're not you. When you're playing yourself, you become very self-conscious. You're walking around the house going, hi, 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 how are you doing? Does that, does that sound like me? Does this sound like me? Does this sound like me? I mean, you start getting, analyzing how you sound and how you act. It's not a good look. But um, again, Pop Funko is a very innovative toy company in the sense that they have a really distinctive style, even if they're doing really disparate uh, franchises. You know, they do everything from DC heroes to the Golden Girls. And then they have that unified look of the oversized eyes and the big heads and all of that. And uh, the one that I did, I, well, I had it a minute ago, is special because uh, I said, can I be in this shirt? This shirt right here, my son designed this shirt, Nathan, and this is uh, Lava Bear. And it, I wore it on uh, the Big Bang Theory, too. So in the Pop Funko, I'm wearing that T-shirt. And again, I thought, this is, must be a really <laughs> limited audience of uh, what nine-year-old would say, I don't want Luke Skywalker, I want Mark Hamill. You know, I'd be very worried if my child reacted that way. Have you ever thought about how many, like, toys, Funkos there are that exist of you? Is that, like, is that crazy? Is that weird? Well, for, when, at first, what, what I've had a lot of uh, action figures that were uh, based on animated shows I did, you know? I mean, the Star Wars stuff was one thing. I said to George when we were making the original, I said, oh boy, there's gonna be a soundtrack album for sure and probably a poster. Uh, and they were hoping for a comic book. And I said to him at the time, can you send me one of everything? If it... He said, sure. Who knew I'd get an electric toothbrush, you know? <laughs> Wallpaper and underoos. Oh my God, I'm a Pez dispenser? Better than an Oscar. But, um, so that was a novel, but what happened was Nathan was just a toddler, and when they send all these toys, I could have said, you know, we'll put these in the attic, and they'll increase in value, and they'll be mint in the box, you know, 30 years from now. I, that's not, even though I was a collector, I said, what dad would keep these toys? So I, every, I gave him everything, and, and his brother, and, and you know, Griffin and Chelsea. Years later, of course, they'll say, why did you let us give Princess Leia doll a Sinead O'Connor haircut? And I said, well, they're, you know, they're toys. They'll see in a, they said, look, mint in the box, it's $1,800. I said, you know why? It's because when you take the buns out, you can never get them back in. And kids did that. So to have it mint in the box and you know, undisturbed the, from the way it was issued is a miracle. Now this is not your first Comic-Con. Do you have a favorite Comic-Con memory? Well, I made, uh, I directed something called Comic Book the Movie in, I think, 2002 or three, And it was a mockumentary set at the Comic Book uh, Con. And I had all my voiceover friends do parts. It was, it was a storyline I came up with that they were free to improvise and add ideas. And you know, voiceover people are just so gifted. And a lot have come out of improv and stand-up comedy. So it, it was great fun. But within the context, because I said, look, if I go on the floor, it'll be a personal appearance. They didn't have selfies in those days that I remember anyway. But it would be constantly signing posters and posing and so forth. I said, so I've got to come up with an alter ego. So 
I became Don Swan, who was a high school teacher from Wisconsin who was a expert. It was based on the fact that when they were making the first Batman, they hired a guy who was a, like a well-known Batman expert who had the best collection of Batman memorabilia. And the fan world knew him and hired him as a technical consultant. And basically, it's a way of establishing your credibility with the fans. I, I love the fact that here I was set loose in the comic book. And I had red hair. I made the two locks like Robin in the comic books. And um, I had rose-colored glasses. But I just got to geek out and be uh, you know, a different person, which is great. I didn't have to take responsibility for whatever anybody's idea of who Mark Hamill is. You've been busy. Um Child's Play, mm. Chucky, and now Dark Crystal, which you guys had a very exciting day today. You actually got to show an episode, right? Yes. How exciting was that? Incredible. Now, again, I, as a child, I idolized the Muppets. Even before Sesame Street, they'd be on the Ed Sullivan Show, and I knew from that age the innovation of Rolf's hands, all of it. I mean, and they, they were the Saturday Night Live for six-year-olds. So to evolve and get to work with Frank Oz, who I knew had been did Fozzie Bear and Piggy, and realize what a gifted performer he is with Yoda. Because I'm telling you, you know, it was dodgy on camera. Is this going to work? It's a puppet, you know. And he was so brilliant. And then to do the Muppet Show and meet them all, you know. The, again, going back to the Simpsons toy, this is a benchmark in my career. I've done a Muppet Show. I could die happy. Uh, uh, and, and again, I, uh, w when I saw dark, the original Dark Crystal, I said, this is pushing the boundaries like they've never done before. It's dark, it's menacing, it's even scary, but ultimately uplifting and a complete uh, uh, transformation into another world, as vital as Tolkien or Harry Potter or Star Wars, for that matter. Here was this, uh, uh, this incredibly innovative film. And it, it wasn't widely accepted at first. I know it made money, but it's only over the years that it's gained its reputation as a, a real classic. So um, uh, the script is everything. And uh, uh, Gary Kurtz, who produced the original, uh, last time I saw him, said, I read uh, The New Dark Crystal, which is a prequel, and it's they're really good scripts. I said, I'm in it. So it was great. They asked me. I didn't have to audition. Can you imagine? That's, now see, that's gold. One more extra. Hit the subscribe button and the bell. Never miss a video.